Okay, look at this um, test review. Unit 2, test review. Hans says Unit 6. Ignore that. That's how our state changes things. They just reorder numbers to make them they change. They really have to. Um, look at, I'm serious. Look at number 1. The ratio of the measures of angles in the triangle is 8 to 3 to 4. Find the measures of the angles. Right? Looking at um, this, they're telling you the relationship between all three angles, and then it says to find the angles. So what would be helpful here? Draw a triangle. We have relationships within the triangle that are 8 to 3 to 4. Does 8 plus 3 plus 4 equal the sum of the angles of a triangle? No, what are, what are, what is the sum of the angles of every triangle? 180. 180. Right, Matthew? You with me? Yeah. Um, so these don't add up to 180. There is a hidden factor between them that we don't know. There's a hidden factor that we don't know. That's it. So that's what you need to solve for. Now, can I set up an equation to solve for the angles? What would it be? <laughs> Keep going. 8x equals 3x. If you would just do what with those numbers? You would just add them together. i got to fix my picture. Hold on. You would add them together and set it equal to 180. All right, mine looks better now. All right, 8x plus 3x plus 4x equals 180. So 15x equals 180. X is what? 12. Hey, did it say solve for x? No. No, it said find the measures of the angles. Yes. talking about angles. No, it's not. It's talking about sides. So instead of inside the triangle, they're going to go where? On the outside of the triangle. We still have a common factor missing, right? What do these add up to? Do they add up to 180? No. 180 has, is only associated with what part of the triangle? Let me ask it again. 180 is only associated with what part of the triangle? The inside, which are called the angles. Right. This is the outside, and they tell you the perimeter is 130. So these add up to equal what? What do I set these? 130. And then it is the same concept that once you do find X, they want you to then go back and find what those sides are, okay?
how you make up. Look at number three. Find the scale factor of A to B. Great. That was totally. I need you to finish. Uh, find the scale factor of A to B. What is A to B doing? It's a, it's a shrink. That means the scale factor has to be what in terms of one? Less than one. In order to find the scale factor, you're going to find two sides that compare, They're, they correspond, and you're going to just divide them. Um, order does matter now because it is shrinking, so the order does matter. Remember I told you that when you're finding the scale factor, divide them in the manner that represents what's happening. If it's shrinking, then that means it's getting smaller, then the small number needs to go on top. So find two sides that compare. So I'm going to have to look at them. This is a small, this is a large, this is a small, and this is a large. All right, so I'm going to pick the two large numbers because there's no decimal. Y'all with me? Okay, so I can either set it up 20 over 36 or 36 over 20. The way you determine which way you're setting it up is based off of what's happening. It's a shrink. So that means put the smaller one on top and then divide. You do need to map bracket in order to keep it a fraction. So 20 over 36 divides to be what? What is it? Mm -hmm. Math, hit math fraction. fraction. Is it five? Yeah, five over nine. So the scale factor is five over nine. Um, be careful on number four. You should notice it's turned. You notice how they're turned? Like this, this is the tall, long side. 28, the longest. Over here, that's that one. So be careful. Now it's going from B to A. That is a what? Enlarged. So I'm just going to write bigger. It is called an enlargement, which means the scale factor is what in terms of one? Larger than one. Come down to number six. Be careful in six. Remember we talked about how those bow tie looking ones sometimes have been twisted and then sometimes they have not? How do you know when it is twisted or not? Use this. Make a note. Use similarity statement. Make that note. So you don't set up the wrong sides when you're comparing. Okay? So, for instance, I've got to solve for this. This is L. N. L to N needs to go over what? L to S, which is over here. So L to N goes over L to S. Now you got to go back. L to N was here, so now L to M. L to M goes over L to R, 28 over 24. You will put those in parentheses. Okay? Take a highlighter. Take a highlighter. Please. Highlight. Number six, number eight. Hold on, hold on. And 
did none. Six and eight. Watch your similarity statement. Make sure you're comparing the correct things. Okay? Just like I did right here in the six. Go to nine. Nine says, if these two triangles are similar with a scale factor of four colon three. Look at this. This is red four, two, three. That's how it's read, four, two, three. Which means it's either four thirds or it's three fourths, depending on which direction you're going with it, okay? Um, find the perimeter of WXY. So we want the perimeter of this one. Do we have the perimeter of this one? I don't have it right off the top of my head, but I have the info to find it, right? Okay, find it. It is 64. All right, if we want to find the perimeter um, of this triangle, you can do this two ways. You can find each individual side and then add it up, which is three steps. Or you can say, all right, I'm looking for one perimeter. I'm just going to put question mark, uh, P1. I'm looking for P1. I know the other perimeter is 64, <coughs> right? Yes? What did they say the scale factor was? Four, two, three. Which shape's bigger? The one on the left. So that would be the four, and this would be the three. So I can set this up with my scale factor. You see where that came from? The three <coughs> came from the triangle that I don't know the perimeter. The four came from the one I do. And now cross multiply. That only works because it's perimeter, which is the distance all the way around. You get 48? Is it working? Do I get 48? So the perimeter is 48, the one we're looking for. Um, come right here. This is exactly like your homework. Determine if they are similar, and if so, by what shortcut. If they are similar, finish the similarity statement. If they're not similar, you would simply write not similar, and you move on, okay? So you have to check it by the similarity shortcuts. What do we know here? They are touching. That means something is not marked. What's not marked here? Number 10. What is not marked in my picture here? Well, I mean, like, what is something I can mark because of the way they're touching vertical? There's vertical angles right here. I want you all to write that and then draw an arrow and write it because you're going to need that when we get proofs. Eight doesn't have any vertical. Oh, eight? Sorry, eight. Yeah, eight has vertical. Um, you don't need the angles in eight. Look at the Look at your similarity statement in eight. So I always go to one with X. So this one is SR. SR needs to go over QR. And then you come over here and you find it. And that's how you know what to set up. Does that make sense? So SR is going to go over QR. 
and then TR is going to go over PR. That's what I meant by when we highlighted on the front. Use that similarity statement. The order of the letters is telling you how to set it up. Because you're right, you don't know which one goes to which <coughs> unless you have that similarity statement. Um, going back to number 10, what shortcut are we trying for here in number 10? Which shortcut? Yes. So what do we have to check off then? We already know the angles are congruent. What do we have to check with the sides? If they're go to the P. The sides, if the lengths of the sides are proportional, right? How do I know what numbers to compare? Well, since all of them are given, all four are given, you could label them with what? Small, large, and then you would know which ones to compare. So do that. No, then that means that means because they are similar. So did you compare They are similar by what shortcut did you just do? Remember, what are your three? What? Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. Well, look at the picture. Did you just work with two angles, pairs of angles? Two pairs of angles. Did you work with three pairs of sides? Or did you work, y'all with me? Yes. Did you work with two sides and an angle? There you go. Alright. Now you have to finish this. P K M. P to K to M. Look at what you went over. Blank over small. So do blank over small over there. What would it be? Blank to small. <coughs> Yeah, I 
get number um, five and six? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're here. Um, let me just try and find them. I'm just going to help you there. I don't think they're here. Oh, yeah, those are just eggs. Can you get the What? Yeah. I need to retake those pictures now because that was definitely not on there. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you're on 10. I did. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. He cross multiplied instead of dividing the fractions. Mm -hmm. When it's not okay is if I say find the scale factor. There's no cross multiplying in that. You would actually have to divide them. Um, number eleven. Uh, look at number eleven. This is one of those problem solving problems. That was redundant, but um, go to what you know the most about. First of all, what do you what do you have in the picture? You have angles within. Stay with me. Let's test this tomorrow. You can do it. You have angles within. How many triangles do you see, y'all? Yeah. No, I know what you're thinking. Um, because it's embedded completely. Yeah, you just got the three. You've got this one right here, the small one, and then you have the outer one. Um, what are the angles of a triangle add up to? 180. Um, go to what you know the most about. I know this triangle has one angle missing, so could I find it? And what would it be? 95. Okay, now focus on the big triangle. How many angles of the big triangle do you know? You know two of them. You know C and A, right? Mm -hmm. So do you have enough to find B? Mm -hmm. What would it be? <coughs> what would this one be? 30 what? 35? Double check it. So are the two angles similar? Are the two triangles similar? Yeah. Why not? If you basically sat down and looked at the angles, the small triangle's angles are 38, 47, 95. Now go to the big triangle's angles. 35, 47, 98. How many do they have that match? Well, they have one pair. Right? How many do we need to be able to say they're similar? Angle angle means you need two pairs, which means there's not enough here, so they're not similar. And if you need to list it, you you know you can sit here and say one of them's 38, 47, 95. I made mine. And then the other one is 35, 47, 98. So this one matches, but that's it. For angle angle, you've got to have another pair of matching. So that's why they're not similar. Okay? Um, look at number. The rest of them are all straightforward. I don't think there's any tricks on anything else. Yeah, I did. Is it the same thing for number five? Same concept, yes. I feel like in number five you can actually see the short side and the short side though. I don't I don't think you need the statement. I think I did number eight wrong. As that. 